Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Brothers and sisters, welcome, welcome Hope you are all doing well and hopefully you can hear me Inshallah, let me know in the live chat if you can hear me clearly Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim I do not have the headphones on me today well, hopefully you can But hear me. Uh, let me know inshallah if the voice the is clear The video I think is clearly. live Yeah, I can see myself over here Rahim. But uh, let me know I if do not have the headphones the, on me oh, today oh, oh, hold up, hold up Yep, the audio needs to be muted so it doesn't repeat Assalamu alaikum, brother Salman Nasir has joined us on... Uh, Instagram, welcome, welcome. And also, I'd like to say that we have brothers and sisters joining us, inshallah, on YouTube. Let us know if the audio is clear right now in the live chat. Let me know if it's working properly so that we can get started, inshallah. Yes, double voice. But is it, is it still double? Because I heard a little bit. Hopefully it shouldn't be happening now. Is it clear? Okay. Fantastic. Alhamdulillah. All right, brothers and sisters. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to another live stream. Today we are talking about the history of Masajid and Muslims in America. It is a great and very interesting and unique topic. But before we start, we have to make dua for our brothers and sisters in Gaza. Ya Allah, may I make it easy for our brothers and sisters in Gaza. May end the genocide as soon as possible and alleviate their pain from today onwards till forever inshallah and may you punish the oppressors who are doing this ameen ameen ya rabbal alameen so brothers and sisters today of course there's a video coming out in less than an hour alhamdulillah it is uh, the masjid next masjid in austin but i wanted to talk about this specific topic because we do not get to talk about it as much as we would like but uh, uh, at the same time i want to make sure that i have shared with you the link of our launch good fundraiser crowdfunder that we are doing right now so I'm just going to share the link real quick with the brothers and sisters who are, who are not aware of it right now. So I'm just copying and pasting it right now in the live chat, inshallah. And there you go. So I just, and I'm going to pin it to the comments. So brothers and sisters, inshallah, we're going all the way to Alaska from here to Colorado to Alaska via California right after Eid, inshallah. And today I have started packing. Alhamdulillah, the packing has begun actually right here so you can see the bags are getting ready alhamdulillah starting to put stuff in there you know all all the stuff so inshallah we're gonna get started early two weeks to go not much time but uh, may allah make it easy for us so let's get started inshallah brothers and sisters let's go all the way back we're talking about the history of muslims and because muslims for them the main the most important thing is the masjid right it's the place to pray it is the house of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and of course we have to make sure that we 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 have that but interestingly in america the concept of the masjid is not just a place where you make sujood right the literal meaning is the place where you make sujood sajda right so it is it has evolved and it ha it has actually went back to the original meaning of the masjid which was the community center if you think about it you know the kaaba is the original masjid the first masjid which was selected by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the second masjid right is what the the masjid an nabawi the masjid the prophet's masjid وسلم, in medina and if you remember the concept of the masjid and nabawi oh what happened what happened to our camera yeah that is strange the camera just stopped working let me fix that brothers and sisters let me fix that real quick this should not be happening maybe it's the battery that ran out but let's play it one more time inshallah i apologize brothers and sisters <laughs> today the technology is failing on us but uh, let's see what happened. Let's see real quick what has happened with our camera. Uh, as you can see, my cat is in the back, mashallah. I'm not sure what happened here, but let me fix that. I plugged it in one more time. Not sure what is going on, inshallah. All right, brothers and sisters, let me, let me do this for now 
so that we don't have any problems. I have no idea, brothers and sisters. I think the battery, this is the camera that I'm working on. This is the Sony camera that I live stream on and uh, oh, okay, it's working now, inshallah. Just uh, battery exhausted. It's saying that the battery is exhausted. So I think we might not be able to work on the Sony camera, but it's strange, right? Because I have it plugged in into the, uh, let me try something here. So I plugged it into the other USB side. So let's see what happens. But yes, otherwise we'll just do it with the webcam. Otherwise we'll just do it with the cap webcam, inshallah. So, seems like the camera is not working. Nope. Okay, so we'll just continue on this, inshallah, right? On the, on the webcam of the, <laughs> of this, inshallah. That's fine. You can also check me out on uh, Instagram, brothers and sisters. I have it on my phone. So brothers and sisters, I'll just look over here. Say assalamu alaikum to my cat in the back, having a nap, alhamdulillah. But let's go back to the history. So the Masjid al-Nabawi, right? That's where everything started. Let me see if I can increase the lighting of this. Right, so because the lighting is really bad. How about now? Is it much better, inshallah? I think it's much better, inshallah. That should be much better. Alhamdulillah. All right. I'll just move a little bit back so everything is clear, inshallah. Let me just fix the fix the background, inshallah. A little bit, brothers and sisters. <laughs> this is live, brothers and sisters. <laughs> this is insane. All right. This is what happens when you go live. All sorts of failures happen. But Alhamdulillah, I have, this is actually the packing going on in the back. So I got clothes that are gonna be getting packed. Okay, all right, so let's get back to it. So we were talking about the Masjid al-Nabawi, how it became the community center for Muslims. So from the beginning, right? But then oh, slowly but steadily, when we come to Muslim countries, that kind of stopped happening. Sure, it was a place where people would go and pray and read the Quran, but it became strictly a place where religious activities were happening more. And if you wanted a social life, that would happen somewhere else, like the cafe or the bazaar or the, you know, in the homes. So that aspect slowly, slowly went away. But in America, Alhamdulillah, the America that I see today and the America that I've seen historically, because we are a minority, it became a place where people would gather and get together and, you know, uh, establish a community in the, in the right sense of the word. You're praying together. At the same time, you are just uh, getting to know each other. You have similar beliefs. You have similar cultural, socioeconomic backgrounds. And then slowly, slowly, alhamdulillah, we, here we are today, 200, 300, 400 years later, where this has become such a special place for Muslims in America, right? So Brother Muhammad, just want to quickly answer him before we get back to it. He is asking, do you plan to visit the Memphis Islamic Center in the future? Absolutely, brother. I do, inshallah. Actually, I wanted to go there in season one. Season one had a much bigger uh, plan uh, in terms of, you know, scope. But unfortunately, we were unable to continue with that. It included Tennessee and uh, Arkansas and Kentucky and all that. But, uh, you know, I had to cut short because that wasn't really part of the Midwest. It is part of the South. But inshallah, we definitely want to do that. If you can connect me with the brothers and sisters over there, that would be great. Email me, inshallah, and uh, hopefully we can plan uh, in the near future about the South, especially Memphis and Nashville. I know Nashville has that has a you know big massage over there. So, brothers and sisters, we are talking about the history, and I want to go back 
I want to show you real quick actually there's a there's a video that I made that I want to quickly mention before we get into the details so this is the this is the the video that has this history that I'm about to get deep into but if you want a quick you know uh, summary then you can check it out in just two minutes so so this is this is the one that I'm talking about this is the one so we are at the channel as you can see right so the channel is right here but this video right here the second the one where you see 1938 mentioned right the inside the oldest open masjid of america that's season one episode 28 that is exactly the one that i'm talking about brothers and sisters that is the one okay this is the one inside the oldest open masjid of america now let's get back into it you can check it out in your own free time but the this is this masjid is in dearborn and the name of it is the american muslim society now this is masjid number six or seven in terms of its lineage of in terms of its you can say hierarchy in the history of masjid in america right now let's go back to the first one historically speaking we are talking about the facts as much as we know so the first masjid that was most likely the first masjid ever built by a muslim in america was probably in the 1800s we're talking about the first muslims that came into this country they i mean there are different historical recordings some say but they are not accurate you know we they can we cannot say that yes most definitely this was the one but there are different accounts some say it might be the chinese muslims it might be you know some european muslims some arab muslims but we know for sure that it was the west african slave muslims free muslims but that were brought into the this country as slaves we're talking about muslims from west africa especially a brother by the name of bilali muhammad a muslim that was brought here against his will from west africa he was taken to the caribbean and then brought bought uh, his his he was bought by a slave owner in america and brought into the us in the state of georgia his name was bilali muhammad the brother was brought in to a plantation right and then he he was you know he was a slave but then there was this place in georgia by the name of sapelo island it still exists today in georgia if you go to google maps right now and type in sapelo island you can go check it out that's where this is and he was given kind of like a like a commander position even though he was a slave he was given uh, a position of a commander military commander if you want to say it to take care of that so but specifically as a muslim we are interested in the islamic history right he built a masjid in sapelo island where if you don't know 30 percent of the african slaves that were brought into this country were muslims brothers and sisters they were muslims that were brought into this country right 30 30 to 50 percent you can easily say that the african slaves that were brought into america were muslims and then what they were doing is obviously building masajid because they need a place to pray the obviously they had they wherever they were staying they would have a place to pray they would pray together but in sapelo island we know for sure historically speaking because they were also records historical records and of course bilali muhammad has written down certain uh, manuscripts of his Islamic knowledge whatever he had he knew how to write in Arabic he knew how to read they were scholars they were there was another scholar there that existed that mashallah he was doing some amazing work and uh, alhamdulillah there's also uh, also historical records that exist in the east coast mashallah the 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 uh, national library congress library library of congress has those records you can go check it out inshallah right so mashallah 
Jazakallah, brother Muhammad. Yes, please do email us. Yes, so so that's where it started, right? And we have to pay respect. We have to pay our respect to our brothers and sisters. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah, brother, brother Abdul Yusuf. Welcome on Instagram. So we have those records that exist there. That is most probably the first masjid that were built. Of course, as time went by, you know, the masjid is gone, unfortunately, because we did not have people to, to preserve it. And that's why those masajid are a part of history now. But Alhamdulillah, we pay respect to our brothers and sisters who initiated it. After that, factually speaking, we come to the 20th century where in 1915, brothers and sisters, we're talking about the time when World War I was going on. So a lot of our Muslim brothers and sisters came from the European part of the world and especially the Albanian. If you don't know, brothers and sisters, in Australia especially, there's a huge part of Muslims that have migrated, had migrated to Australia. And there's the, the One Path Network. If you don't know, brothers and sisters, the One Path Network, mashallah, they're doing amazing work in Australia. The brothers and sisters in Sydney, especially, they went to this masjid. There's, uh, mashallah, almost one million views that uh, documentary that they made in a very nice light style. They went to this small community in uh, the northern part of uh, Queensland, right? In Cairns, near the city of Cairns, they went to this uh, special small town where Albanian Muslims for the past 100 years have been practicing Islam. It's a beautiful story. Go check it out, inshallah. One Path Network have, have made that story. And the same story exists, similar story in the U.S. where Albanian Muslims in 1915, brothers, Albanian brothers and sisters, they were working in a factory right the pepper pepperal counting factory pepperal counting house in maine in the state of maine brothers and sisters can you believe it the state of maine nobody knows about it when we talk about islam in america we talk about either michigan or new york or texas or california nobody talks about maine but that's where the story started in maine the brothers and sisters that are working in the factory they were actually staged. Their homes used to be the, in the uh, the the where, where the, their employees were stationed. Right? They had accommodation for the brothers and sisters who were living there. So they established the masjid, most probably a musalla. Right? We're not talking about a separate building, but that is a masjid that was established by the Albanian Muslims. They were living there and. I kid, I kid you not, mashallah, they established the first Muslim cemetery in America that still exists today. SubhanAllah, we have brothers and sisters buried in the state of Maine in that, uh, in that uh, city where they used to work. And mashallah, I saw the pictures. I have added those pictures in that video. Go check it out, brothers and sisters. Inshallah, may Allah give us the tawfiq to visit them one day and uh, and recite the Fatiha on their graves, inshallah. So that, unfortunately, the masjid is gone. You know, it's been lost to time as the case with the previous one. But alhamdulillah, their graves are still there. They are marked with their Muslim names, alhamdulillah. Inshallah, one day we will go there. So the, the cemetery, the Muslim cemetery is still there near the city of Augusta, if I'm not wrong, Augusta, Maine. After that, brothers and sisters, what happened was that in the city of Highland Park, now we're going into Michigan, near the city of Dearborn. Now it gets interesting, right? Because now the history of America, the history of the automobile industry, the history of Muslims immigrating to the U.S., this is 100 years in the making, brothers and sisters. This is what happened here. Now, in 1920, the first masjid built, the first masjid that was built in a building. This is what happened in Highland Park. Right? Now, the story that is still going on, 
that Muslims buy a building or they lease a building, right? And then they start praying in it. This is what happened in 1920 in Highland Park, Michigan, near the city of Dearborn. They did that. They bought the building. And mashallah, they bought the funds. This, this, was, this was historically recorded in the newspapers of Detroit and Dearborn at that time and Highland Park. You can, I have put the images of those newspapers that covered that the Muslims of Highland Park, the Muslims of Michigan are finally going to establish a masjid, right? So that's what happened. But what happened is that there was some disagreements among the Muslims, but a bigger uh, factor in the masjid not continuing was the fact that the Ford factory, so all of these brothers and sisters were actually, they were working in Ford, in the in the, you know the at that time ford was the tesla if you want to call it the revolutionary car uh producing the vehicle producing company that and ford for some reason henry ford i'm talking about was very interested in bringing muslims especially from the middle east we're talking about the levant not just muslims actually christians People from the Levant, it didn't matter if they were Muslims or Christians, but he, ha he had a fondness for people from the Levant. I'm talking about Syria, Lebanon, and um, Palestine, Jordan, all of these areas. So he was making it easy for them to come to America, right? So people in the hundreds of thousands flocked in from this part of the world and also the Mediterranean and they were getting jobs at at Ford at the plant at the plants for the vehicles, right? So mashallah, that's what was going on. Walaikum assalam, brother Saeed Ahmad. Walaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, welcome. And then we have Christine. Welcome, Christine, joining us from Dallas, Texas. So that's what I was talking about. And then suddenly, for some reason, the Ford Motor Company shifted their factory to Dearborn which still exists today. But that's where the roots of Muslims in Dearborn were planted. And the masjid no longer made sense to be in because everybody was going to move it to Dearborn. Now, being in Highland Park did not make sense. Hello, hello, Savage. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now, they, they kind of, you can say, let go of the masjid. They just sold it or we don't know what happened exactly. But the Highland Park masjid lasted only for a few years right now they moved to dearborn and detroit but what happened and now uh, what, what happened in the rest of the country now in michigan city indiana we're talking about michigan city there's only one masjid if you google right now and it is a shia masjid now uh, the difference is that this is you can say historically speaking for for the Shias, they have, this was their first masjid, like totally Shia, right? There's no uh, uh, two doubts about it that they are Shia and they had their first masjid. And that masjid still stands today. I visited it in season one. You can go check it out, that, uh, that episode where I visited it and I told the story about this particular masjid, right? It has a very di distinct kind of... Although that masjid was not the original masjid, the foundation of that masjid was laid, as in they incorporated their, their uh, association of Muslims with the city, right? And, but then the masjid was made much later, in the 30s or maybe in the 50s or 60s. But you can say that the congregation put their roots there in Michigan City, Indiana, right? So the, we also have that going on at the same time but that was 1924. After that, in 1929, all the way in North Dakota, right? North Dakota, if you know, if you Google first masjid or oldest masjid on Google Maps or even in Google itself, that masjid shows up. And you're like, and I'm like, I'm, like, I'm not going to talk about personally. I'm like, what? What is this masjid about? Like, what's the history? It's not exactly a masjid it's actually a replica of the original masjid now let's get into the history so in 1929 right we're still in the 20s 100 years ago north dakota hardly any muslims in that state right but 
in this uh, uh, in this place which is very close to canada ross ross right nobody knows about it some people might call it rus <laughs> which is russia in arabic now in ross north dakota there were muslims a very small town and they built a masjid maybe they were working in some factory over there or they just happened to be there and mashallah these are the pioneers right of of muslim immigration in this country but then they started their journey of of uh, of uh, islam in america Jazakallah, uh, Savage is calling me a uh, masjid historian. Ha, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, we have, we have got to talk about it, right? So, what happened in uh, North Ross, Ross, North Dakota, the brothers and sisters, again, they had a small house in a prairie. And it was a little unstable. And after a while, unfortunately, it, 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 by, by Allah's, act of act of god by allah's you know uh, decision that house was gone as in because uh, because you know we're talking about the midwest and i've rode my motorcycle there it did not survive because of the high winds and the open prairies and it was made out of you know uh, wood most probably you know allah decided it's not going to happen and unfortunately it's very unfortunate brothers and sisters but it's beautiful at the same time. It's interesting. The t second generation, the third generation, the fourth generation, one of those people, he decided he did not remain a Muslim, right? This is how we're losing Islam in, in America because, you know, you need that community life. But that's, uh, let me tell you what happened. This guy... Who, whose parents used to be the original Muslims of Ross, North Dakota. He's not a Muslim anymore. He's probably, you know, Christian or uh, someone from the other faith. He said, even though I'm not a Muslim anymore, I want to preserve the legacy of my ancestors who were Muslims. Subhanallah. You have to give credit where it's due, right? We have to appreciate the fact that this guy was not even a Muslim anymore, but... He had respect for the masjid. He preserved, he, uh, you know, brought funds together from the local people. And he said, we're going to build the replica of the original masjid. And inshallah, we have to appreciate, I don't know if he's watching, even if he knows about this channel. But uh, thank you, brother, for doing that. You know, we really hope that uh, inshallah, you come back to Islam. But uh, I have to say, may Allah give us, give us the opportunity to visit this masjid. It is one of the oldest masajid in America. And the fact that it's not a masjid anymore. Because a masjid is where you put your head down in sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is technically not a masjid. But maybe the, you know, the, the fact that it is being preserved as a masjid. We have to appreciate it. Brother. So Alhamdulillah. We, uh, inshallah one day I hope it happens. I do visit. But that's 1929. But that's technically not a masjid. But brothers and sisters who visit, I have, I have heard that they make sure that they pray Salah, at least, you know, if they're not able to get inside, they pray outside out of respect for the masjid, right? Yes, let's talk about Dearborn. We got a comment. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullah, my brother in Islam, nice to meet you. Ramadan Mubarak. To you and your family, may Allah accept our fasting. MashaAllah. Jazakallah, brother. May Allah. Ameen. Ya Rabbal Alameen. May Allah accept our, our ibadah. May Allah accept our fast. And may Allah accept our salah. Because, brothers and sisters, remember, Allah does not need our hunger. Allah says that. And especially the sacrifices that he, we do, He does not need it. We need Him. Right. So we have to remember that as long as our uh, intentions are pure and in the right direction, Allah will put barakah, inshallah, in our, in our ibadah, in our lives, inshallah. So let's get back to it. Savage is asking about Dearborn. We're going to get back to it. But we have one more masjid to talk about, which is... Oh yeah, just uh, I have the notes right here just to just to clarify that that uh, uh, masjid in Ross, North Dakota in 1979 it collapsed unfortunately and today stands as a memorial masjid, no daily prayers or imam, but inshallah may Allah 
Inshallah, one day, may, may Allah's name be glorified once again, Inshallah, in that masjid. Now, now, interesting. Now, this is the interesting part. Let me show you real quick. Let's go back to the channel. Check this out, brothers and sisters. This is the channel, right? This is the home page. And look at the main vi um, video. The first video on the channel that your eyes get onto is what? Inside the oldest masjid of America. We're talking about the mother masjid in 1934 you see that right you see that and now let's talk about that before we get back to dearborn allahu akbar brothers and sisters if you haven't already please please watch this video it is a very very important video if you do not see any other video on my channel it's okay as long as you see this one now let's talk about it right season one episode 41 Inside the oldest masjid, the mother masjid. Let's talk about it. Brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah, I have to give a shout out first of all to the, the African bloodline, the brothers in, in uh, Iowa City. These are college kids, the brothers, right, who went to this masjid in the first place and they went there and they did an interview with Imam Taha, right? That's how I got to know about it personally. Now, what happened was that uh, the, the video came out and Alhamdulillah, it reached a lot of people. I got to find out about it. I was in my early days of this journey, this project. So I, was, uh, I had already uh, planned for Minnesota. But when I found out about this one, I was like, mashallah, we have to go there. We have to do this as well. So Alhamdulillah, uh, I got in touch with Imam Taha. Right? This story is historic it's significant it's important imam taha may allah bless him for the great work that he has done he's extremely humble he is extremely uh, he he is our hero brothers and sisters as american muslims this man is our hero we need to know this story we need to share this story because with this blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this man, Allah has done it, but his contribution, he has saved this masjid for the history of us. He has single-handedly, and mashallah, with the help of other brothers and sisters who I have been mentioned in the, in the video, he has saved this historic piece of building because this was sold to the this uh, to the Christians, it has it had become a church, and he uh, from the original uh, people who were taking care of it, they had sold it. They were like, "Oh, we don't need it anymore." And he he when he found out about it, he said, "No, no, no, no. This is not going to happen. This cannot happen. This is the historic mother mosque of America. This is the first. Okay, why is this significant? I didn't tell you that." Because this was the first masjid that was built from the ground up. This is why this is the first masjid of America, right? Now, the one in North Ross, North Dakota, it was already something else. They had, you know, uh, uh, I think they had turned it into a masjid, the house that was turned into a masjid. But this one, from the ground up, it was conceived it was the near the intention was that this is going to be the first masjid that is going to be built as a ground up in this country right so alhamdulillah that is the legacy of this masjid then and, and uh, when it was sold to others to the to the christians and uh, imam taha said no no we have to preserve the legacy of this masjid we must get it back and we must glorify the name of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this house of allah so the campaign that he took himself over, right? He got, can you believe it? He got backlash from his own community. He got backlash from the Muslims in America, in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Can you believe it? Yes, that happened, brothers and sisters. Can you believe it, right? A man is saying, a brother in Islam is saying, we need to get this masjid back so that we can preserve the legacy of this masjid. And what happens? The, our own Muslim brothers and sisters are like, why? What's wrong with you? Why are you wasting our, your time? Who cares about history? Who cares about, this is just a building. 
And this brother, he is Palestinian. He is Palestinian. Brothers and sisters, what's going on in Gaza right now? You know our brothers and sisters are being slaughtered. Astaghfirullah al-Azim. Day and night, they are being killed in the thousands, 30,000 plus brothers and sisters in Gaza have been just astaghfirullah. These brothers and sisters, the Palestinians, the, the ones in Gaza, in Bethlehem, in, in Ramallah, in uh, Jerusalem, in Al-Quds. I tell you, brothers and sisters, they are going to be in the front, in the front on the day of judgment. On the day of judgment, they are going to be our leaders in the front, the sacrifices that they've made. And they continue to make. We cannot, we cannot thank them enough for the for the work that they have done in this dunya, they are getting, they, we are nothing. We cannot even imagine. I cannot imagine. I'll talk personally for myself. What they are going through, what they, the, the courage that they have, the, the mindset that they have, the heart that they have, lose, losing your family members for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the sake of this this uh, holy land, yeah. The, so and and then they come the ones that they the in America they have done so much work, brothers and sisters. You cannot. This is what I realized in my journey, right? How many Palestinian brothers and sisters do we know, right? Personally, I'm talking about the Desis or the African Americans or people from different places. Right? Uh, unless you are in the masajid and going out there. We don't know a lot of per people personally, right? Because of a lot of segregation among or ummah itself. And when I went there, I realized how much work the brothers and sisters of Palestine have done work in this country, especially in the Midwest. So, Brother Savage is saying that the people in Palestine are not being heard, the Muslim countries are not listening yes brother that's what's happening but i'm talking about the history particularly in america so imam taha taha Tawil, he said in the video if you haven't seen it he has mentioned i asked him why is this masjid so important for you and he said because he has seen what has gone and happened in Palestine, right the value of Al-Aqsa, the value of the third holiest masjid in Ardeen, in Islam, right? It is so valuable for us Muslims. And how many of us really know about it? The compound, right? We have masjid. We have the whole compound, which has two, three masajid. Of course, the Gumbad, the Sakhra, Al-Qudsi, and mashallah, the Qibla. And, the, and there's another one. So, mashallah, this, this, this is, we need to preserve our legacy. Not only because it is so religious, because it is the house of Allah, because what do we have to give to our ch next generation, our children? We have identity crisis in this country. Our children, like I just mentioned two seconds ago, that the, the, the brother who is not even a Muslim anymore, he is preserving the legacy of the, mus uh, the masjid in North Dakota. And we Muslims, what do we have to give to our next generation? If it's not history, then what else is it? I have to give it to the other communities that they make sure that their historical places are preserved in America. We talk about the African Americans or we talk about the Italian Americans or we talk about the Jewish Americans or we talk about any community they make sure that their history is preserved. So what's wrong with us as Muslims? Why are we, why, why don't we care about our history? I'm talking about the mother mosque. We, brothers and sisters, go right now to the website and help Imam Taha build a visitor center if you care about the legacy of us in this country, right? Most of the people don't, unfortunately. 
Most people do not care about it. But I'm telling you, if you don't care about it, your children are not my children. Your children are not going to care about it. Unfortunately, they're going to be confused. They're like, oh, all these other communities are preserving their history. What do we have? Maybe our parents did not care much about it. Maybe I don't need to care about it. Maybe being a Muslim is not important. Right? These things are important to our children going forward. Secondly, so that's the masjid, right? That's the masjid. Getting back into the history, that is why this masjid is so important. Now, I guess let's get back to uh, the, the oldest open masjid in America, which is the Dearborn Masjid. Now, brothers and sisters, this masjid, American Muslim Society in Dearborn, it was open. It is the oldest masjid in the state of Michigan, right? And it is the oldest open masjid in America. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is that the mother mosque, although Alhamdulillah it is open, but Imam Taha cannot lead all the time, right? Because the Muslims have actually in Cedar Rapids move into another area, which is the Islamic center of Cedar Rapids now, which was built in the 60s or 70s, something like that. And now that masjid is whenever Imam Taha is available because he does not have the resources. He does not have the funds to, to open it all the time and have a full time, you know, congregation and help each other out and the bills and the, so we need brothers Brothers and sisters, we need to help Imam Taha help this masjid become a museum slash masjid. So that's where the funds and the donations and the support comes in. Islam only way out. Brother, assalamu alaikum to you all the way in the UK. Well, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us, brother, in the UK. Inshallah, may Allah revive that masjid again. Inshallah, brother. This is the reason why I am so... I am pushing the narrative towards bringing brothers and sisters into this project. Because, alhamdulillah, this is the stories that will never be covered, unfortunately. Right? And we need to care. We need to start caring because if we don't, then why would anybody care about you, Muslims of America? If you don't care about yourself, why would anybody care about you? That's the question I ask myself. And that's why I need to think that, oh, why is this so important to us? Why, right? Moving to Texas, inshallah, is great for our, for our ummah. Right, because there's so much going on, alhamdulillah. But we need to make sure that we are one ummah and that we help projects everywhere, especially preserving the legacy. Now, the second masjid that you know, I have to, I have to say, brother, that again, the oldest masjid in Texas, the African American brothers, they are leading the charge, alhamdulillah. Subhanallah, the oldest masjid, like today Texas is about these celebrity scholars or these programs or these, you know, we got, mashallah, we got a lot going on. And I have to say that I have witnessed something that is not happening anywhere else in the country. A lot is happening everywhere else, but in one state alone, nowhere else. Inshallah, we'll go and check out California and find out that what's going on over there as compared to Texas. But, subhanAllah, that's what's happening in, in uh, Texas, right? But when are we going to appreciate our African-American brothers and sisters? They have the oldest masjid in the state of, the great state of Texas. And that masjid is, if you've seen the video, that masjid is literally falling apart. Literally, from all directions. And we got brothers and sisters, mashallah, with, with a lot of money that Allah has blessed them with. Why are we not giving money to Masjid al-Islam? Why is that Masjid still struggling? 
with uh, collecting funds and donations. It is a shame. I'm sorry, brothers and sisters, I'm going to say it out loud. It is a shame. We should be ashamed that we are not focusing on the legacy. We are not supporting our African American brothers and sisters who who have taken it on to themselves that no, we are going to feed our brothers and sisters who need help. We are going to preserve or Islam in downtown Dallas, in downtown Houston, in downtown Atlanta, Georgia, in places which are ignored because we have moved to the suburbs. Alhamdulillah, of course, that makes perfect sense. We need to save, right? Or, or uh, selves from high rates of crime or, you know, uh, unexpected uh, situations. But these are the brothers and sisters who are doing the work of da'wah to the brother to the people who need it the most who are in the front line who are homeless or who are going through crime or we are not ready to go into that right because we, we don't want to get our hands dirty we don't want to deal with people but these are the brothers and sisters who need our help help them brothers and sisters go and give them the donations give them the funds because they need it and they are doing the, the work of da'wah that a lot of people are not ready to do. So please, do help them out. So Brother Islam, the only way out is saying fams, facts from Brother Bukhari. People need to realize. Jazakallah khair, brother. The thing is, I was listening to the brothers, uh, uh, I was listening to a podcast just this morning and they were talking about subhanallah how much work these huge organizations are doing but brothers and sisters we have to realize they have a lot of money already alhamdulillah they've worked for 10 15 years to build these organizations but the fact is now they have a lot right and uh, where they can afford brothers and sisters who have different skills. But these masajid, they don't have that. These brothers and sisters who are working on the ground, they do not have that. Right? So we need to help them because honestly, glorifying these organizations is great. You know, Alhamdulillah, they're doing great work, but we need to get out of our comfort zone. We need to get out of our sahur fests. I'm sorry, brothers and sisters. <laughs> we need to step out of our, uh, you know, fantasy world and go out there and help our brothers and sisters. Like, I really respect the brothers and sisters who volunteer for Ikna Relief. Right? MashaAllah, the brothers and sisters in Ikna and uh, all these other organizations, they are there every Juma, every Saturday, every Sunday, working with their hands, going out there, volunteering, spending their time, their money to help our brothers and sisters or Muslim brothers and sisters who are in need. Yes, we are in need. We have brothers and sisters who are still struggling here in Colorado. I'll give an example. Here we have brothers and sisters who are struggling, you know, who, who are struggling for food. So we need to go out there and help them, right? volunteer give money give zakah give sadaka so so we definitely need to do that because it's not easy for a lot of brothers and sisters and uh, you know mashallah i really respect a lot of work that the scholars are doing but i have to say brothers and sisters we need to focus on this as well we got people who do not who whose priorities need to be set up straight because the ummah cannot just uh, say that, okay, here's the money and all right, I'm going to go to my uh, my Yemeni coffee house and going to enjoy the rest of my evening and uh, call it a night, right? So, so I'm sorry, brothers and sisters, going deep into it, but we need to have this conversation. So after that, another masjid that I want to talk about is the oldest masjid in Austin, Texas. Alhamdulillah, we got the privilege of going there and vis vis visiting the masjid. I'm talking about Nuasis. And subhanAllah, they are doing such amazing work, right? So we need to appreciate the fact that we got masajid in this country who have 
amazing history and they are still running. We got another masjid that I'm really excited about, the oldest masjid in California. And that is in Sacramento. I must mention it the last week as well, but I have to say these masajid, the long forgotten masajid, right? They are still running. They are still doing amazing work. And that's interesting because that's a masjid run by the Desis. So the immigrants from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, you know, South Asian immigrants, they came and they opened the masjid in Sacramento. Can you believe it? In Wyoming, we have amazing history. We got the history that is amazing, beautiful history. And this one uh, brother from Al Jazeera Plus, he made a video about it um, in, in Wyoming. This family, this Pakistani family, actually it was... Uh, uh, Tamale Louis Khan, you know, his uh, name was something else, but he became famous selling tamales in Wyoming, right? And mashallah, he has such a, he was a Pathan from the Northwest Frontier Province, uh, the Khabar Pakhtunkhwa Province in Pakistan before partition, right? So that was British India at that time where he ended up in Wyoming. How beautiful is that? SubhanAllah. All the way from KPK to Wyoming, subhanAllah. Brother Uthman has joined us. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullah. Brother, brother, welcome, welcome. Welcome to you. I believe it is your, uh, you have done iftar already or not? Let us know, inshallah. Because I know you're one hour ahead of us. So, Wyoming, out of all places, has such amazing Muslim history, right? And his wife, with the help of his brother, after he died, they opened up businesses, hotels, Mashallah, the masjid is built in Gillette, Wyoming. It's, I believe, four hours, four or five hours from where I live. Inshallah, one day we will go there and cover that story. In Wyoming, Mashallah, the Gillette masjid is, is uh, opened by that family. Subhanallah. And uh, their family is so big, it's like 200 people in that area, in Sheridan and Wyoming. So we got people there. We got people... Uh, mashallah in different parts of America that have preserved that have made sure that Islam is being practiced in places where you would never imagine we got people in Montana subhanallah we got people in uh, Northern California Oregon Washington so mashallah we have to appreciate you know there's a place beyond the Midwest beyond Texas beyond uh, the East and West Coast and that's what we're interested in in Florida, there's a place in, uh, in the Florida Keys, right? So, you know, Florida is Miami. And then south of Miami, there's like, there's a highway that goes all the way. There's those islands. They are called the Florida Keys. And the last island, the Key West, there's a masjid there, subhanAllah. And the brother, the imam over there is running that masjid, subhanAllah. And he is, that is the, the best thing about that masjid. That masjid is the closest masjid in America that is closest to Makkah. Subhanallah. Right? Because of the geography of that place. So we have to. Brothers and sisters, inshallah, make dua that Allah gives us the tawfiq that we go there in all of these places. Because I love it with a passion. Subhanallah, brothers and sisters. This is, this is a privilege and an honor to visit Allah's houses. We are sinners. I am a sinner. I'm going to say it. I'm a, I'm a sinful person. I'm not, you know, as, a, as much as I can try to be a good Muslim, I try to be a good Muslim. But at the end of the day, you know, every day we commit sins. And as long as we try, we feel bad about it and make istighfar and try to apologize and be a more, better Muslim. That's what it's all about, right? So, but be, despite all of that, Allah is in letting us in into his secret homes. What a blessing. What an honor. What a privilege. Especially in this country where our ancestors, uh, we, we were talking about the history, right? Our ancestors have made such sacrifices. I'm sure it's hard to build a masjid today. In the most Muslim of Muslim 
places. You go to Chicago and ask the people how hard it has been for them to build a masjid in the greater Chicagoland area. You go and ask people in DFW how hard it has been for people to build a masjid there. How much opposition in California, right, in New York. Still, the city council in, in, in here, in the, my local masjid is, has wasted, has their three years have wasted because the local opposition. We would have had a masjid right now in my local area. But unfortunately, because of the opposition and the wasting of time and the delaying and the lawsuits and all of that, three years have gone when we don't have a masjid, unfortunately. But inshallah, the resilience of the Muslims, because of the rights of us, alhamdulillah, in this country, we fight. It takes us longer. But alhamdulillah, the rights that we have, and the, uh, the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we make it happen. It takes us longer, but alhamdulillah, we have it. All right, we have comment, rather than saying, Musajid are the most beloved places of Allah. May Allah love you. Jazakallah khair, brother. Le Islam al Francis. Jazakallah, brother, from France all the way. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. Alhamdulillah, we have the video that is live, brothers and sisters. The video of the beautiful masjid in Austin is live right now. But uh, today is the first time we are still going live because we have a big topic to cover. So we're going to keep going, inshallah. So I was saying, um, the masjid, alhamdulillah. It is, uh, you know, before this whole trip started, I'm going to share it for the first time. Because brothers and sisters, a lot of people might say, man, why are you talking? Why, why aren't you humble? You know, why aren't you? Why, why do you pray in front of the camera? Why, Brothers and sisters, it, our actions are based on intentions, right? Our actions are based on our intentions. And my intention is always so that we have a positive impact on the next generation. We live in a world today where it's what you see is what impacts you. It's the truth. It is the absolute truth. Right? We have a rider, a Pakistani uh, rider, uh, adventure motorcyclist who makes vlogs. And uh, I was talking to a friend of mine. He told me he went to Kuwait. So I grew up in Kuwait. My friend, he grew up in Kuwait. We know each other since we were kids. So when he went to Kuwait and made a few videos, he felt so nostalgic he said man i gotta go back to kuwait i gotta visit kuwait so that's what's happening that's that's the impact that our videos have i went to texas i got so many comments brother bukhari i'm going to tell i'm moving to texas i'm moving to dallas right i'm moving to ohio i'm moving to this place i'm moving to that place i'm like subhanallah i got comments oh i grew up in gary you brought so many memories back Oh, I grew up in, uh, I know this guy. I grew up with him. You brought so many memories back. I want to visit now. SubhanAllah. This is happening because this is the impact, the power of media and the power of the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We cannot help ourselves. Allahu Akbar. Look at the Soto House of Peace. MashaAllah. The video is going so strong. The impact that is happening on non-Muslims. They're like SubhanAllah. Look at this beautiful house of Allah. They want to visit these masajid. They are curious. They want to become Muslim. Yes, this is happening. And this is the hard work of our brothers and sisters who have given every single dollar, every single penny, every single second of their time to make this happen. This is happening. And masajid are the most beloved, as the brother said, from France. These, this, this, these are beloved to Allah. These are beloved to us because it makes us feel a better person. Every time you are invited to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you feel you're a better person just by being there. It's like Allah, Allah invited me here. How privileged I am to be invited by the God Almighty to worship Him with these brothers and sisters who... Say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is our privilege. And I feel so honored. I Sometimes I talk to myself, brothers and sisters. I talk to Allah. I say, Ya Allah, I do not deserve. 
I do not deserve this. Astaghfirullah alazim la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. I do not deserve this, brothers and sisters. But I am greatly honored that Allah has let me do this. Because if you remember, brothers and sisters, this this is uh, this is not me doing this. This is you. First and foremost, this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? This is the will of Allah that this work is happening. This is not me. This is not you. But what's the impact that's happening on us? Right? We have brothers and sisters who have built these masajid or historical masajid and they are gone. They are under the ground. They are in the cover. Right? They, they're, they're, uh, you know, they're in the barzakh. Right? They, are, they are in a different phase, in a different stage. Their hisab has kind of started. They are, they are answerable to the, to the angels right now. We are here in this world. Their time is up, right? The imal that they did. And look what they did in their lives. They built the masajid. They built the communities. They laid the foundation that we are standing on in this country. In the most powerful country in this world, they built the masajid, subhanallah. They could have built, you know, casinos or bars or places of fitna and fahash. What did they do? They built the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah gave them the tawfiq. And they are honored, privileged to do that. But now their time is up. They are under the ground. Alhamdulillah. Now it is our turn. This is our time, brothers and sisters. And look, we got hundreds and thousands of brothers and sisters flocking to the masajid every single day, working hard, giving uh, the, without being mentioned by me or by anybody else in the videos. Right? And they are doing their work without any, any, right? SubhanAllah, the volunteers, the board and the brothers and sisters, the cleaning the bathroom, the helping them uh, with the iftars, the cleaning the, the trays and in the, in the, yeah, you cannot imagine what's going on in the background. They are putting themselves, you know how in Surah Al-Waqiyah, right? Allah says that there are people of the left hand and the people of the right hand and then there, there's the third category that are people in the front and there are people in the front that are always going to be in the front subhanallah so these are the people that are increasing their Allah knows Allah knows brothers and sisters I am of the opinion we should not judge anybody as long as you know they they have the kalama they are our brothers and sisters and may Allah guide us all. I'm not better than anybody else. I don't know. Allah knows who's better than me. Who's, who's worse than me. Allah knows. I can't judge. Because Allah is the only entity, the ilah, that has the authority to judge us. We do not have that. We do not know. Sure, we can say, okay, brother, this is sister. This is not what we should be doing. But say it in a way that the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said. In the most nicest, kindest manner. And I think we have lost that, but may Allah give us that. The ikhlaq, inshallah. But what I'm trying to say is, brothers and sisters, being kind to one another is very important right now. Especially in the masajid, right? We, we have a lot going on in the masajid, in the outdoor spaces. There's a lot of judgment out there. But what we have to do, is be nice and appreciate what we can do for, for our brothers and sisters. But laying the foundation for the next generation. What can I do? And personally for me, I have to say I love being in the arts. At the end of the day, this is storytelling. You know, houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the West, this is a story in itself. What each community is doing in each state Subhanallah, the brothers and sisters in uh, everywhere, what they're doing, it's unique in its own way. But this is a, it's a story at the end of the day. It's a story of a Muslim community in America, the Muslim American experience, right? And we have so much diversity and that's a story in itself because the Ummah is diverse, right? And brothers and sisters are interested. They want to find out what's going on. And that is what the journey is all about. 
And subhanallah, I have good news for you, brothers and sisters. I have a great news for you. That subhanallah, today I got the good news that our brothers and sisters in Canada, our neighbors, our brothers and sisters in Canada have welcomed us. Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless the brothers and sisters in Canada. I'm talking about especially, obviously, already people in Toronto have been welcoming us. But of course, we can't go there right now. We're going to the West Coast. And Alhamdulillah, today we got the good news that our brothers and sisters in Vancouver are waiting for us. Alhamdulillah. So inshallah, we are going to be covering our stories of our brothers and sisters in British Columbia. Right? So that which is very important. What are they doing up there? SubhanAllah. They've been there for decades and they've been working hard in Canada, in the West Coast of Canada. Inshallah, we're going to cover that story. MashaAllah, brother, brother Hayden is here. I was thinking about brother Hayden has not commented yet, but welcome, welcome, brother. Brother says, I'm sorry I'm late, but was traveling today. Make it, made it safe. Besides, littlest daughter Oh, astaghfirullah, brother. May Allah give your daughter Shifa, inshallah, complete recovery, inshallah. We all know how hard it is. Inshallah, brother. May Allah, may Allah give a complete shifa as soon as possible. May Allah take her pain away. Ameen. We know how hard it is with our kids. I know, I know, brother. I have uh, small kids too, so it's really hard. It's very tough. But, uh, you know, it's there. Uh, what we do for them, Allah, Allah knows. And Allah puts barakah. We are doing it for them, brother. Brothers and sisters, we are doing this for especially for them. Acknowledging the history is one part, right? The second part is making sure that our kids, the next generation of Muslims, do not get confused anymore because they're already confused, some of them. May Allah guide our children, but we, I, I cannot. <laughs> I'm like, man, we need to work. We need our own textbooks of history. Nobody is going to read some, some brother's PhD or some sister's historical research. May Allah bless them. But we need to make it easy and accessible for the next generation. Because where is the next generation? They're on TikTok. They're on Instagram. They're on YouTube. Right? And if they're not there, they're in Islamic schools. Our work needs to go into Islamic schools now. The work that we're doing. It needs to be in children books. Inshallah ta'ala, may Allah make it happen. Because our kids need to know our Muslim heroes in this country. They do not have role models yet. Right? So we need to make sure they know who did what in this country. Who is doing what. And what, what is our future in this country? Inshallah, we're going to deep dive into that as well in the coming few weeks. But for now, I just want to say, brothers and sisters, we need your support. We got, mashallah, brothers and sisters who are doing this already. Let's go and show you what's going on. This is what's going on, brothers and sisters. We are working to preserve our history, to document our history of Islam in America. Inshallah, after Eid al-Fitr, two weeks left. This is it. Only two weeks left. Ramadan, halfway we are done. We need your support, brothers and sisters, to make sure that our history that we're documenting is preserved once and forever, inshallah. So go to the Launch Good link that is pinned in the live chat. You can find it also in the videos that are coming out. Alhamdulillah, go check it out. Open the link. You can support with any amount you want otherwise you can also share it with your communities in your whatsapp groups with your uncles your aunties your your uh, local masajid whatsapp groups your local you know volunteering groups share it with as many people as you can because we need this to happen inshallah i need your support brothers and sisters we already have 30 brothers and sisters who are crowdfunding we do not have any organization backing us right subhanallah we do not have any entity any foundation that is backing us we need your support this is a crowdfunding effort of the ummah 
we need the ummah to help us inshallah make this happen because we we help out everybody right we help out people from all different organizations but this work which is not funded by any group that wants to promote lgbt agendas or they want to promote values that are not islamic you know what i'm talking about exactly these are discussions that are going on in whatsapp groups in our local masajid that what are we going to do to protect our kids from this fitna and facade that's going on and this is one way that you can make this happen by preserving our history we are going to utah we are going to nevada we are going to southern california arizona northern bay area Oregon, Washington, British Columbia, Canada, and inshallah, finally entering Alaska. This is a historical project, a monumental task that has not happened before. And we need all the duas and all the support that we can get inshallah. I would have not told you this, brothers and sisters. I would have kept it a secret, a project, a surprise and make it just like we had in Texas, just like we had the Midwest. But now... We have brothers and sisters who believe in this work. We have brothers and sisters from overseas who believe in Islam in America. They want to see this happen. They want to support us. We have brothers from the UK, from France, from Australia, from Malaysia who are supporting us. Alhamdulillah. We got brothers and sisters from all 50 states that are supporting us. Alhamdulillah. They know about this project. They are giving, if they can support it with their financial uh, uh, means, they are giving us their duas. And that means that we are going to take this to another level, inshallah. Love the motivation, brother. Alhamdulillah, brother. It all comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the truth is, without, if you, if you go back to Surah Yusuf, right? If you remember when, uh, you know, uh, Hazrat Yusuf salam, was being tempted, he, he seeked refuge from Allah. That, Ya Allah, protect me from the evils of this situation. And Allah said in the Quran that if it wasn't for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even Hazrat Yusuf could not have been protected. He wouldn't have been able to hold himself fought his nafs so we have to remember whatever is happening is happening with the will of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happening because allah wants this to happen we just need to make sure our niya is in the right place so even you know the beautiful i was uh, in tarawi on the weekend and um, you know while the tarawi was going on i had a brother next to me and you know, I, I don't understand Arabic, unfortunately. So, But I know Surah Taha was going on and uh, there was this beautiful verse where uh, I think uh, the Prophet Moses, Hazrat Yusuf, uh, Musa, he had this, he has this dua that even Numan Ali Khan, whenever he starts his Jumu'ah Juma Khutbah, he always recites this ayah, Rabbi Shahrli Sadri, that translates to i'll tell you the translation later but this brother next to me started crying he started literally just yes and you know i i i don't i at that time i didn't understand what exactly why is he crying it might be another ayah it might be another whatever it might be but man i was like subhanallah this brother has khushu right now the level of connection that he has with God right now, he's understanding what Allah is trying to tell him. Allah knows everybody's position, their situation, what they're going through. We don't know. But I have to say that when you see that, you're like, man, subhanAllah, this is the level of level of uh, khushu and the, and, the, and the closeness to Allah that we all crave, subhanAllah. But I have to say that I are translates to, Ya Allah, open my chest, open my heart and my the knots of my tongue so that they may understand me. They understand me effectively. I'm just saying, Allah gives us everything. We, yeah. So don't say, brothers and sisters, uh, you know, he did this or she did this or, you know, the, all praise is to Allah. The, the, the brothers, uh, mashallah, the, the power that we have just to, 
say anything it's all allah and may allah make this so successful that the hearts of us or or muslim brothers and sisters and the people of other faith that are considering thinking about islam they all consider and realize what's going on we have a comment in the live chat bukhari wa alaikum assalam uh, salam bukhari wanted to ask are you still in denver are you going to do a denver masjid tour yes brother alhamdulillah i uh, definitely want to because this is my hometown and uh, i have already filmed one masjid which is masjid ash-shuhada uh, i was earlier talking about how important it is to appreciate our uh, masajid there are especially in the inner cities so alhamdulillah i filmed that already uh, i inshallah i do want to cover other masajid my focus is the other masajid uh, other states right now but inshallah i'll try to uh, film them and hopefully we can make them a part of the alaska journey if not then inshallah we will keep doing that in every season right so fort collins masjid is very beautiful very big i think it's the biggest in terms of size i do want to cover that you know golden masjid boulder masjid they are very important uh, for us as well so inshallah hopefully we can do that in the future you're the brother from thornton right mashallah <laughs> masjid al ikhlas if i'm not wrong which is very important they have helped the afghan brothers and sisters a lot they're doing great work up there i also alhamdulillah had uh, had the privilege of visiting and right can't wait to watch jazakallah khair brother we got the rocky mountain muslims over here what is this it won't come off <laughs> okay i don't know what this is but this this is my, probably my cat's hair right now <laughs> <laughs> so yes um brothers and sisters that's very important so i was saying you know alhamdulillah brothers and sisters uh, again i would like to say that whatever we are doing we have to take ownership of it because this is this is it this is one life one umma and uh, we can die any minute any second any day we do not know that allah knows that so let's make the most out of this life right let's make the most out of it we have our battles to fight against the nafs against the shaitan against the dunya against you know a lot of things going on against time management you know we got a lot going on but what are we doing again brother sam shaheed you remember mesquite masjid what did he say use your skills what are we doing ask ourselves what what can we do for the umma for the betterment of the umma with whatever we can So inshallah this is what I'm doing and I and you can help support this journey and that will be your way of helping the umma right because I I see a lot of you know I talk to the brothers and sisters right I'm in there and I I say brother you guys are doing sister you guys are doing amazing work mashallah you know we got so many brothers and kids you know that you got so much going on for kids and then they tell me You see this brother but there's so many that are leaving Islam astaghfirullah ala sayyid and I'm like really yeah astaghfirullah that's happening and unfortunately that's happening at the same level of people being active because you see my content and the masajid content and the you know everybody's putting out there we have this mindset that subhanallah there's a lot going on and there is what's going on in it of itself is a lot going on but in the opposite side there's a lot that is worse that is the opposite that's going on people leaving islam you know people uh, being being judged and uh, uh, thinking no community life they don't have what what certain masajid have what certain areas have the struggles of being a muslim the struggles of not having you know whatever is going on so so we have a lot going on brothers and sisters what we need to do is make sure our work gets to them as well because you know i know that i mostly focus on our brothers and sisters but a lot of people of other faith are watching our work and getting inspired by it they they really appreciate it and that's to keep this going we definitely need all the help that we can these trips 
I again, you know, brothers and sisters, unfortunately, I do have to repeat this again and again because there's a lot of people that do not know. So first thing first, I do not take a single penny from the masjid, any masjid, right? If they want to help me out, it's up to them. But so far, nothing, right? Alhamdulillah, the brothers and sisters in Manhattan, Kansas, they helped me out with the accommodation that night. But other than that, nothing. Unless they want to help me out with the crowdfunding, it's completely up to them. But when we go and make the masjid video, this is my khidma, this is my serving the masjid, alhamdulillah, right? So, but we, I don't have, uh, mashallah, there's organizations out there. If anybody can connect me, Muslim uh, organizations, foundations who fund this type of work, that would be great because they do help and support with these type of organizations. But right now, I'm not connected with them. I'm connected with my audience. I'm connected with me, Ummah, Alhamdulillah. And that's the biggest contribution that we can get. We got brothers and sisters who, who give $100, $200, $250. But there are so many brothers and sisters who give $5, $10, $20, and every dollar counts, brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah, because this is the concept of the ummah, right? What, what is the ummah all about? It's about helping each other about, uh, helping each other out, about, about supporting each other in times of need, about making sure that we are part of something that is bigger than just me alone. Because it's not about me, oh, I don't want to be... Me, uh, I don't want to be, oh, everybody should be praising me all the time. Astaghfirullah. No. This should be about praising Allah and the houses of Allah and making sure that this journey gets done as soon as possible, inshallah, and with the safety and the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because this is something that has never happened before. And may Allah put barakah in it. May Allah put, may Allah put e effectiveness and efficiency in it. May Allah make it easy for us, inshallah. Because... I see a lot going on in Texas, brothers and sisters in Texas, but they are concentrated in Texas. I see a lot of brothers and sisters in California, but they are concentrated in California. We are doing a work which is nationwide, telling the story of Muslims all across the country. We got brothers and sisters, I'd like to give you an example. Columbia, Missouri, right? The masjid there. The, the only masjid in, in I-70 from Kansas City to St. Louis, right? But the significance of that masjid, 1980s it was being built. The only Islamic school in that area, subhanAllah. And they're connected with the brothers and sisters in Kansas City and St. Louis. But in that area, the college town, I never knew about it. But it's so historic, so significant. And mashallah, one brother emailed me and he told me, Right, without going to details, that my father was one of the founders of that masjid. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. You, this is this is the value. And he said that video is so valuable for me. Subhanallah. That that it means so much to me. That uh, obviously you know it. Uh, what I'm just, I just, and I just go into my own zone where I'm like, Subhanallah, this guy, and he, the brother has passed away, the, who built the masjid, and he must be thinking, Subhanallah, my father, what this is his legacy, and so many kids, the next generations are taking advantage, Sadaka Jariya, forever, and that's what's going on. Mashallah, today the video that came out, Flugerville Masjid, right? Mashallah, the story is so beautiful. The brothers and sisters in Pflugerville, they're so humble. They call themselves Khadim. You know what Khadim means? Servant. They are the, they are the leaders of the community. And they're calling themselves Khadim. They did not even want to be on camera. They did not want to be, you know, yeah, because they're so, they're so used to being behind the scenes that they feel shy, man. And, and subhanAllah, I push them. Trust me. Not just generally giving an example. I'm like, brothers and sisters, this is the time to be on camera. And I know I respect some brothers and sisters. They don't want to be. I don't push them that much because I respect everybody's, you know, uh, their uh, uh, personalities and their everything. But I'm like, brothers and sisters, this is the time to tell our story. You guys have been working behind the scenes for so long. And mashallah, this, I don't want you to uh, leave this earth 
before you, we tell this beautiful story that you've been working hard for generations and they continue. And I'm like, subhanAllah, these sacrifices that they're making, the amount of work that these people do, Allahu Akbar. This is special Allah has given them. They are the soldiers. They are the warriors. They are taking things to the next level, mashallah. Their stamina to, to patience and perseverance, you know. This is exactly what Allah talks about. in sabirin. And Allah is with those with who are the patient and may give glad tidings to the patient. Because this work is not easy. You think this is easy? Alhamdulillah, we have our rights and everything. But you, you think dealing with each other is easy? No, because everybody has their own mindset. Right? So dealing with that in itself. So subhanAllah, brothers and sisters, do check out the masjid. Flugerville Masjid. We are in Austin in the season right now. And mashallah, this is a collaboration effort, right? Mashallah, this is a big, big collaboration effort. Let me just show you. This is the collaboration that we are doing, brothers and sisters. The crowdfunding effort is the collaboration that we need, right? In, and we are going to continue. This, uh, this is not a one man tells the story. Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar, brothers and sisters. We just had a donation. We just had a, had a big support from Fauzi. Ahmed Usman, MashaAllah, MashaAllah, Brother Fauzi, may Allah bless you. May Allah bless you and your family. May Allah bless you with, with khair in this world and the next. May Allah bless you with Jannat al Firdos, MashaAllah, Brother. We really appreciate you. We appreciate your support. This is what I'm talking about. You see that, brothers and sisters? This is what's happening live. This is what's happening. This is the collaboration that we need the help and support every single day. We need it, brothers and sisters, and this is what coming through. Coming through with your help is what matters, brothers and sisters, right now. And this is what's going on. Brothers and sisters, uh, I believe uh, uh, the, the, uh, one of the imams has uh, the similar name. This might be the imam, might be not, but may Allah bless you, no doubt about it. So I am, I am just... It makes me cry, brothers and sisters. I swear to God, Allahu Akbar. It sometimes it makes me makes me so emotional. I'm a very emotional man, brothers and sisters. As as uh, I'm sure a, a lot of you know that already, that I get very emotional, <laughs> and uh, you can see that on camera and off camera. But live right now, I got I'm ready to burst out, but. The sincerity that I see in our brothers and sisters, you feel it. And you say, man, may Allah give me that as well. Because that's exactly what we need in this life. Too much dunya out there. But as a Muslim, we need to balance the deen and dunya, right? We need to balance the deen. We need to achieve the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by submitting and living in this world and facing the challenges of this dunya while we go through this dunya. So this is the test, right? So Allah said it in the Quran, right? That don't forget your share in this world. Focus on the akhirah. Remember your goal, but don't forget your share in this world, inshallah. And that's what we're going to do. Focus on the akhirah. Focus on, remember that we are going to die one day. What can we do to make sure that the next generations get the best of our skills and the help and inshallah, whatever we can. So that's what this is all about, brothers and sisters. We, we are appreciating each and every one of these brothers. Check this out. This, check this out, brothers and sisters. We, th these are the supporters. All of them. May Allah bless them. They have been supporting us. Check the, oh, each and every one of them. They have been giving us their support. May Allah bless you. All of you. And if you want to read the details, all of this detail, the impact of our work, what is going to happen, inshallah. And then if you want more details, the numbers are down here. The, the you know, accommodation expenses, the gas, the production, the everything, the emergency. And this is, of course, the work that we have done. You can check out exactly what we have done in the Midwest, right? We went to the Midwest, all over Indiana, all over everywhere. These are the stories that cannot be 
that haven't been covered before and i don't see anybody doing that so may allah make it easy for us all of these brothers and sisters everywhere mashallah may allah bless them right so this is you can see it masajid of midwest video the drone shots are right here subhanallah oh look at this work subhanallah so brothers and sisters this is exactly the work that i'm talking about that that we want to achieve these are the beautiful beautiful work that that our brothers and sisters have done i want to get back to my main main uh, uh yeah right here want to see anybody's commenting as well in the live chat inshallah so brothers and sisters i'm gonna call it a night inshallah because you know i've been here too long but now what's the call to action the call to action brothers and sisters is that we need everyone first of all to pray for our brothers and sisters in gaza may allah make it easy for them yes there's just pray for them day and night the last 10 days are coming they need our duas they need our support go there do whatever you can talk to your community and inshallah may allah make it easy for each one of us each one of them and each one of us in the whole ummah may allah alleviate everyone's pain i mean the second thing is this project is the project of muslims in america this is a ummah project our children need this my children need this your children need this spread the word share the link of the of the launch good crowdfunding page let your community leaders know let your imams your boards let the people who are out there let them know what's going on share the word inshallah so they know what's going on and if we can get people who are running foundations who already support works like these they need to know because right now i'm not in touch with them i'm only in touch with the masajid and my my followers and my subscribers and the ummah at large alhamdulillah so spread the word we got two weeks left no matter what happens we are doing this because the duas of our brothers and sisters are with us we are doing this no matter what i'm gonna inshallah Allah is going to make this happen. I'm ready to go. I'm the bags are right here. The packing has started. You can see on Instagram the journey. I'm already letting people know what's going on on Instagram at Mohd Sababa at Bukhari. Check it out, inshallah. So it's going to happen with the will of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. No matter what we are doing, going to do this happen. Make this happen, inshallah. So what I want you to do is focus on your ibadahs, focus on your families, and focus on this work, inshallah. We got the official merchandise right here. I'm going to be rocking this brand, inshallah, which is the Bukhari brand, inshallah. This is a movement, brothers and sisters. And we got, I just went today and I have shipped two more giveaways to the most engaged brothers and sisters. Alhamdulillah, Brother Markle, Mar Marble Jacob and Brother, um, uh, Brother Blue Suspect already. So the most engaged brothers and sisters, they are getting our official merchandise. And if you want, inshallah, one of these, inshallah, let me see your engagement in the comments, in the live chat. Inshallah, you'll get that. I'm super excited to do that. So brothers and sisters, I need to go pray Asr. Iftar time is coming up. Today was a long one, but I am so glad you joined us. Alhamdulillah. I'm going to charge this camera that failed on us today, unfortunately. But inshallah, we'll, uh, you know, get back to it so inshallah brothers and sisters jazakallah khair for joining us today it was fantastic alhamdulillah I've been talking for one hour and a half but inshallah you know uh, yeah i'm done <laughs> so, jazakallah khair brothers and sisters may allah bless you and your families we will make this happen inshallah with the will of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so fiyam allah askar allah la ilaha illallah take care brothers and sisters i'll see you soon jazakallah khair